Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel, or welcome here for the first time. Making here yours truly. I strive here to bring you all things design, from interior design to fashion. Newly, I posted a video on my all-time favorite design books, which I believe every design beginner needs. I realized maybe some were surprised that I did not include certain books from particular popular designers, which I am sure many have, many meaning social media and interior design influencers and fans. One is, uh, yeah, Kelly Wurstler, and particularly this book, her evocative styling book. In this video, I will explain to you why, give a little history of Kelly, her journey and rise in the design world, plus help you with key tips to achieve Kelly's style without landing in the poorhouse. So, do you want to bring a touch of glamour a la Kelly Wessler into your home? Let's get started. Today I'm going to show you how to master the Kelly Wurstler style in your home without breaking the budget. But first, let me introduce you to the iconic designer herself who is known for her bold and eclectic design that exudes sophistication and elegance. Kelly grew up with an antique dealer mother which had a major influence on Wessler at a young age. She accompanied her mother to thrift shops, auctions, and flea markets, developing her interest in fashion and design. She attended Massachusetts College of Art in Boston, where she took architecture classes and completed her bachelor's degree in interior and graphic design. She headed off to LA with dreams of becoming a movie set designer. After a few films, one leading to the residential commission of a director's home, she decided the film industry just was not for her. In the mid-1990s, she founded her own design company, Kelly Wersler Interior Design, KWID, serving mainly the hotel industry. One of her first hotels was the Avalon Hotel in Beverly Hills. Reopening in 1999, it was described as having a style that was, quote, a playful take on mid-century modernism. And almost a decade later, the New York Times would write that her playful, elegant, over-the-top designs for the Avalon Hotel actually changed the look of boutique hotels around the world. The success of the Avalon led to the commission designing Viceroy or Viceroy hotels and resorts, a new chain of boutique hotels which she gave a theatrical Hollywood aesthetic. Viceroy Palm Springs became her most accomplished work in 2001 and the Viceroy Santa Monica, which opened up a year later, received high praise from the press as well. She went on to do many others, Miami, Anguilla, they are all over the world. I will leave the link for the Viceroy hotel chains in the description box below. And in the last decade, who does not know her work with the proper hotel chain? Of course, her rising fame led to private residential commissions, and there is a long, long list of celebrity clients. But one of my favorites oh, was Cameron Diaz's New York apartment. And of course, Kelly's own Beverly Hills home that was the former mansion of the Broccoli family, the producers and creators of the James Bond film series, and her Malibu weekend home. Okay, I could go on and on, but we would be here for days. Google her or go to her Instagram for more info and pics. We need to get to the nitty gritty of this video. Okay, the reason why I did not include her book in my video, when you clearly see I am a huge fan and I know millions have her many books and are trying their hardest to copy her style. 
Achieving Kelly's look for a beginner is very challenging. Kelly's book is great when it comes to visual inspiration, but hard to accomplish for someone not so experienced. The book does not break down rhyme and reason, but just mostly lists which decor items were used. You could try to just buy from what is listed, but believe you me, you will go broke even if you start out with a hefty budget. Her own designs or pieces from other designers, commission pieces, and the vintage items are so expensive. But Kelly does have a masterclass video. I will leave that link also down in the description box. Think of it like a college course. You have, you have the book as reference, but still have to go to the professor's lectures to pass the class. Okay, let's also dive into the challenge of incorporating the Kelly Wessler's unique style into your home without overwhelming your space. It can be tricky to strike the right balance between boldness and cohesion. But don't worry, I got you covered. I recommend starting it first with just two or three of the following elements that I will explain to you in this video. I also recommend staying with solid colors until you find your comfort zone to add more bold prints and patterns to your furnishings and adding more elements or sticking with different bold patterns in a neutral color palette. Think beiges, creams, mostly black. If you try to go for something like this straight out of the box, believe you me, it will go very awry. When starting out to attain the Kelly Wurstler look, there are some things that you can find in your price range or even DIY. These decor pieces slash designs show up in all of her masterpieces, okay? Tip one, first element, very unusual and interesting case pieces. Think sideboards, bar cabinets, book cabinets, etc. Bejeweled case pieces are very abundant in her style. You can create this look by just mounting different flat stones, you know, just gluing them on, on a simple sideboard or side table. You find bags of colorful stones in different sizes at any craft store or on Amazon. Another simple DIY for any simple plain sideboard. I bought this sideboard from Wayfair, mainly because of the perfect size to fit under my artwork and the rich green color. But let's be honest, it was boring. All you need is some coasters in your preferred shape and stone. I found these square green agate ones by Anthropology. You see how I just glued them using a strong compound for metal and stone or cement to a basic flat round pool and then mounted them on the sideboard. If you have sliding doors like mine, I suggest shortening, in my case, the middle piece, but whichever pool that is going uh, on the door sticking out the furthest from the case piece. Use the thickness of the door as a reference when shortening. So all jeweled pools are somewhat aligned and the same distance from the cabinet. I love so much how this turned out. I have ordered white onyx coasters to put on my uh, closet doors in my beauty room. I'll make sure I record a short for you when they arrive. Okay, tip two, the element of whimsical chairs. They may not always be functional, but whimsical. I advise if your space is limited, please try to suffice both. Do I need to remind you? Point is, your furniture must be functional. Do you entertain a lot? Then you need that every piece of seating furniture in your space is inviting to sit on. You can find an abundance of whimsical pieces at flea markets, vintage markets, eBay, etc. You can take a relatively normal chair and paint it whimsical, cover it with some stones or, or mirrored pieces. You can create something like this by covering the chair with paper mache, plaster, moldable cement, building it up to create a sculptured art piece. The same to imitate this case piece. You guys, everyone has a creative vein in them. You just have to find yours. But don't forget, when looking for pieces, Kelly loves to combine mid-century with 70s, especially 1970s sofas and postmodern pieces. So from 1950s, 60s, 70s, 
80s, shop in that time era. Tip three, large contemporary art and artistic light installations. Except for the large abstract art in my dining area, I painted all my other large contemporary art pieces and built frames for them. If you haven't yet seen that video on building the frames, I'll leave that here and as a link in the description below. Art is so subjective. Create your own. Make it for so much less money and personal. With light installations as, as art pieces, you can also DIY. Example here from Kelly's design. You guys, buy yourself a wooden dowel, yeah, about so thick, then cut it to your desired length, basically how far you wish for it to be from the wall. You can find at any craft store a wooden sphere, cut it in half, I'll show a little bit more of a close-up. You'll also see that little bobble on the end. Buy a medium-sized wooden bead. Then glue everything together, paint black or whatever color. Again, you are creating. You can decide. Lastly, wrap to your taste with one of these LED light tubes. You can find these also in many colors. You don't even need an electric source or outlet. Use battery controlled or rechargeable versions of the LED lights that you can turn off and on with a remote control. If you don't like the large mushroom form, go for something like this as a mount that I found for 24 bucks on Amazon or this, which theoretically you could glue on some stone accent similar to what I just showed you to bejewel your case pieces that would add even more character. Imagine a half sphere, marble or onyx piece on the end. And you can find that easily. You guys, just think, a paperweight. With some kind of ceiling mount, you can also DIY this lamp with the same LED light tube. Remember this picture I showed you from Sarah Story's book? I was speaking then about the seat bench and table combo, but look at the light installation and how it has a different color in each pick. Those LED lights have multiple colors you can set. I found these on Amazon, which you can change the background color, or these rectangular ones, which can be set on multiple colors. Look, mount one like this, mount another one like this, one like this, and like this, and then I would do purple to yellow, orange to blue, or just all a warm or a cool white light. A great light installation for a lot cheaper. And if you live in Germany, I found these examples on Kusterman or Kusterman.com. Leave that link down below for you also. Last tip. Finally, bold graphic prints when it comes to wallpaper and flooring. You don't have to spend Kelly prices for her wallpaper. You can find similar designs cheaper. Just search on Pinterest for graphic wallpaper, then go to the websites of the papers that you like. You can also just paint the graphic patterns on your walls or your floors. Referring again to Sarah Story's book, The Art of Home. This is not wallpaper, this is painted. An installation. You know, they always call it an installation when it's just super expensive. It's an installation from an Austrian artist. You guys, spend a weekend. Let your creative juices just flow. You can create this, and if you don't like it, you can just paint over it. And here's another example. As for floors, I painted my kitchen floor with special paint for linoleum. We tried to start in one corner to pull it up and it was just so difficult. And then I started seeing uh, over a hundred years of the many layers of so many floor colorings beneath. I just glued it back down and being inspired from Moroccan tiles, I drew up a design and painted it. I'm actually working on a video that shows more in detail the floor painting, a video on five easy and fun DIYs for stunning decor results. So stay tuned and make sure you are subscribed and turn on your notification bell so you don't miss it. But you can paint wood floors also. In a Paris apartment years ago, before YouTube, I painted the wood floor in the WC, or basically the toilet room. It was pretty worn out from the door to the toilet and in front of the sink. 
taped off in a diagonal square pattern, taking care to cover the more worn spots and then stain those diamonds with ebony black stain. Then afterwards, I varnished the whole entire floor with a clear varnish similar to what I use newly on my floorboards in, the, in my um, hallway. Like I said, unfortunately, I don't have any photos from that floor, but look at the entryway floors of these designers from their Chicago apartment. They created a hexagon design, also using a darker stain than the original floor. It was pretty easy to do. We are in love, love, love with the hand stenciled floors. We worked with Studio Linares, who is our specialty painter here in Chicago, and we did a beautiful hand stenciled painted floors and uh, really everyone who beautiful. comments their comments in thinks that it's you know actually inlay and we're like no it's actually just a, a stencil so it's super easy you know kind of an inexpensive way to have high impact or even this where the designer painted a similar pattern with white and blue if you have a parquet floor already with a uh, delicate wood inlay design imagine painting one board black another one cream another one brown plus sneaking in there another bold color of your choice, forming an interesting pattern to create something similar to this from Kelly. If you have the budget, Kelly loves the design with very bold marble floors, but you can still find leftover marble and stone tiles for a lot cheaper. Create your own design pattern and just cut them to fit your design. I recently acquired these beautiful bespoke tiles, which I plan on using in my powder room for only 130 euros. They are not marble, but will create an awesome bold pattern when installed and lacquered. Anywhere Kelly uses marble is just as bold. You must have the confidence to choose the boldest veining possible. You guys, the sky is the limit. You must have the nerve to be bold, incorporate unexpected elements and patterns embrace maximalism, play with scale, and add that touch of glamour. And when I say play with scale, large, large artwork, then a really little, small, whimsical chair, you know? Large, large sofa, and then surround it with small, bejeweled little side tables, okay? Big, small, big, small. And add that touch of glamour to achieve Kelly Wersler's look. Just dare to decorate. You can do it. I believe in you. You guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you not only enjoyed this video, but got some useful tips. If you incorporate any of these elements, please share them with me in the comments and DM me pics on Instagram so I can share with our growing community here. And as always, yours truly, Heart Megan. <clears throat> just want to make sure my boobies is maybe the one the best dress to wear. I feel self-conscious. <laughs> oh no, that's falling out. Late going to sleep. Oh, okay, switch lights.